Hello and welcome back to our second video. Thank you again for joining AusGrid this Electricity Safety Week. A very important time for us to learn about electricity and how to stay safe around it. My name's Jonathan. Now let's recap what we learned in our first presentation. Three things I learned were, one, leave it to the experts. They are the ones that are trained and should go near power lines and electrical equipment. Two, if you see a fallen power line, stay eight metres away. And if you remember, that's the size of a bus. And number three, look up for power lines. You all know by now that electricity is a common source of energy. In fact, we use it every day to help us do many things, from drying our hair and heating our ovens, right through to lighting up our soccer fields and netball courts. I bet it wouldn't take you too long to think of five things that you've used this week that need electricity. I can quickly think of five in my head. Now some of you at home might be interested in how electricity gets to your home. So let's watch a little video to show you. Electricity leaves the power station along high voltage power lines. These are connected to transmission towers. To get the electricity to your home quickly and efficiently, the electrical pressure or voltage starts at thousands of volts. By the time the electricity reaches your home, the voltage has been reduced to 230 volts. This is the standard voltage in Australia and makes it possible for us to use electricity safely in our homes. Now I'm sure you've seen many power lines, transmission towers and substations like what you saw in that video. Sometimes substations can be in the parks and other small equipment like pillars and kiosk substations can be found on the footpaths of streets. Now that we've spoken about them, you're probably going to spot them everywhere. What do all these things have in common? Well, they are all outdoors. I know we all like to do many activities outside, like riding your bike, kicking the ball at the park, or going swimming. These are all fun things, but it's good to be aware of electricity dangers outside so that we can always stay safe. A lot of the electricity equipment outside is high voltage, and it could seriously hurt you if you make contact with it. Now let's watch a little video about substations. They're behind fences, in buildings, or on the side of the footpath, and most of them have danger signs. Substations reduce the voltage of electricity from power stations, so it can be distributed to homes, schools, and businesses. Sometimes they're near parks and play areas, so you need to be careful and follow the rules. It can be tempting to ignore signs and fences around substations. But remember, the warnings are there for everyone's protection, so make sure you follow them. Substations contain special equipment with invisible hazards. You don't even have to touch anything to get hurt. Just being too close to some substation equipment can be dangerous and may even cause you to be seriously injured. Remember to keep safe and stay away from electrical equipment and electricity substations. These are all some really important tips and now I have a few more to help you play outside safely. Always look up before you climb a tree. Fly your kites away from overhead power lines. If your kite was to get caught in the power line, live electricity could travel down the string and seriously hurt you. Never climb a power pole. If you see an animal or a pet stuck up one, tell an adult and call triple zero. Avoid swimming during an electrical storm. While it might look cool to watch lightning in the sky, you can safely do that from inside a house. Speaking of electrical storms, have you ever wondered why we get more storms in summer? Well, I'm no weatherman, but I do know that storms like humidity, when it's hot and moisture is in the air. Sometimes we'll see storms approaching and other times they creep up on us without warning. They can last a long time or they can quickly pass us in the blink of an eye. The one thing to know about storms is that they're unpredictable. But we do have lots of great weather equipment these days that can usually tell us where it is going and how big of an electrical storm so we can warn everyone to stay safe. Let's have a think about some of the things that can happen in a storm. Lightning can hit trees and they can fall on the street, onto buildings and even onto the power lines. Heavy rain can cause flooding on roads and even in houses. Hail can fall damaging cars and houses and electrical equipment can get damaged and it could cause power outages into your suburb. 
It's important to remember that if we're ever caught in an electrical storm, the best thing to do is to find shelter indoors. Have a battery powered torch in case that power goes off and turn off all your sensitive electrical equipment like computers and televisions. After the storm, one thing that we spoke about in the earlier presentation is that we need to be aware of fallen power lines. Let's just recap again what we should do. If you see a fallen power line, always assume it's live and has electricity running through it. We need to stay eight meters away from it and anything else that it might be touching. This is very important. Next, tell an adult and call triple zero. Now eight meters is around the size of a bus. Can you even think of anything else that might be around this long? I think maybe the half a length of a tennis court. After you finish watching this video, you could even ask your teacher, mum or dad, to give you a tape measure and you can actually look how long it is. Now let's recap what we have learned today. Play in open spaces away from electrical substations and equipment. Substations have invisible hazards, which means you don't need to touch anything to get seriously injured. Stay inside during an electrical storm. If you see a fallen power line, stay eight meters away from it. Thank you very much for joining us.